welcome back to Gardening Young. So today we are going to be talking about five mistakes that I see people making when they're first seed starting. Um, some of these mistakes I made in the past, some of them I've just seen other people who are starting make, um, but I just wanna share these with you so that you can um, not make them yourselves, hopefully to avoid them so that you can get a jump start in your seed starting journey and hopefully you'll learn something from this and this can help you if you are just starting out or maybe you've been seed starting for a while and making this mistake and you didn't know it and this will help you also so let's just hop right so in. the first mistake that I see people making um, is the they are getting the wrong soil um, and this is one of the biggest things that I see people um, making and they usually will go out whenever they're getting uh, they're excited about seed starting and they have to go out and get a soil so that they can put their seeds in their little plastic containers that they got and they're so excited and they go to the garden store and then they get garden soil and then they come home put it in their plastic cups that they got for seed starting and they wait a few days and nothing's happening um, this is because the, the garden soil that you see at the store is way too heavy, especially for seed starting. So um, I do um, encourage you whenever you are getting your seed starting mix, um, whatever that may be, your, um, your soil, your dirt, whatever you're getting to start your seeds in, that it's not garden soil. You have to be careful of what kind of soil you're getting because if it is too heavy, those little seeds will not be able to um, germinate and it's just too heavy of soil for them to get through and sprout. So if um, you are in this situation, one of the best things that I recommend is either a really fluffy potting soil or um, seed starting mix. You can go out, here you have two options. You could go out and buy a cheap seed starting mix that is light and fluffy, you know, marketed for um, seed starting mix, um, seed starting, and you can use that. And then um, if you're starting in little containers and then if you're, when you're up potting, you need to up pot into, um, so, uh, into potting mix that has nutrients in it that's really good um, or you can do what I do and I just do it directly into potting mix in a good size container that it can live out its life until it goes out into my garden um, that's basically how I do it okay mistake number two is that I see people making a lot is that they don't have a good enough either light source or they don't have enough light. Um, I see this and the, uh, the outcome of this mistake is that you can have leggy seedlings. Um, so whenever you are seed starting, you want to make sure that you either have a real, you have a good light source that is going to give enough light to those seedlings and that it's close enough. Um, I mentioned this in another video um, a couple videos ago, but you have to make sure that your light is close enough or else your seedlings will not get enough light and it will um, and they will stretch and become leggy. So this is something that you definitely want to prevent um, just by moving your light source either closer. And also the other thing I wanted to mention is that if you cannot um, purchase a grow light, that is okay. You can start if you have a um, south facing window, you can totally start your seeds in a south facing window. That is something that you can do. Um, you might not be able to have your seedlings there for um, a long period of time because I don't think that whenever they're, they get bigger, it's just not gonna be enough light. But if it is a temporary setup, um, a window, a south facing sunny windowsill is a great option. In addition to um, having the light too far away, um, you also want to make sure that you have enough lights. Um, I know sometimes whenever you have a bunch of seedlings and you get this, li this um, little um, grow light and you think it's going to be great that you found for $20 on Amazon and you start all these seeds and then you realize that you don't have enough light. So you want to make sure that you kind of get an estimate of how many seeds you're going to start and make sure you have enough grow lights if you are going the grow light route um, that you have enough grow lights 
for um, the amount of seedlings you're gonna need to be starting. Okay, so the third mistake that I see people making is that they are starting their seeds too early. Um, I know sometimes we can go onto Instagram or whatever social media platform and we see that people are starting their seeds or we go over to someone's house and they have all their seeds started and we think, oh, I'm late. Oh, I need to be starting my seeds right now. I just want to tell you that you don't know that person's growing zone or um, when their last frost date is and when they need to be starting their seeds. That could be totally different from when your last frost date is and what growing zone you're in and um, why and when you need to be starting your seeds. So um, I do encourage you to look up your last frost date and figure out when you need to be um, starting your seeds and don't just go by what other people are when other people are starting their seeds to figure out when you need to be starting your seeds because like I said their growing zone and when their last frost date is could be totally different from when yours is. Other thing I wanted to mention when it comes to starting your seeds too early is that if you start your seeds too early um, you could be stuck with um, plants or transplants that are getting too big for their container and you still have a frost coming in the next um, in the next couple of days and there's no way that you can put your transplants out and um, so you get stuck with these containers um, or with these transplants that um, are getting too big for their container and then you have to either up pot them into a bigger container which can cost more money more time um, and it, sh it can just cost you more um, resources that could be prevented if you just do your research and check your last frost date and really um, take the time to research when you need to start your seeds at the right time. And the fourth mistake I see people making all the time is starting all their seeds at once. I know whenever um, you know you're a beginner gardener, um, it you, it can be really tempting to be like, okay, I have all my seeds, I've got them, I've got my soil, I've got the right soil, I got the cups I'm going to start them in, and now I'm just going to start all my seeds. That is just not the case. You don't start all your seeds at once. Um, you it depends on the plant and make sure whenever you're starting your seeds um, if you, it's your first time starting your seeds that you do the research because different plants need to be started at different times depending on how fast they grow or how slow they grow so really do your research and make sure that you know um, because some plants like tomatoes and peppers you start eight weeks before your last frost wait <laughs> your last frost date but some plants um, like um, squash you might start two to four weeks before your last frost date or cucumbers those kind of plants um, you might start er um, later so I want you to make sure that you um, figure out what plants need to be started when and don't start everything at once because th that's not how it works <laughs> you have to start different plants at different times okay and the fifth and final mistake that I see people making that you should avoid is not hardening off your plants. Um, I see so many people put all the effort and energy and money into starting these beautiful transplants inside um, and in their greenhouses and they do, they're doing great for eight weeks or however long they've been caring for those transplants and they put them outside directly in their garden without any hardening off and their seedlings get sunburned or die or shrivel up and they're devastated because they put all this work in for ho however many weeks they were doing it for and it all it all goes to waste so i cannot stress to you enough how important it is to harden your seedlings off if you don't know what hardening off your plants is basically the idea is is that um you start your plants um in a controlled environment so i'm completely inside um yes i might put a little bit of a fan in it on it but that is not nearly all the conditions that they're going to be facing outside so the idea is is that each day you take a couple of days to put them out um, for a few more hours each day. So day one, you put them out for one hour. Day two, and you put them out for two hours. How you know? 
and um, then you just gradually get them used to all of the outside elements so that whenever you do put them outside they are ready to go. So um, if you guys don't know what hardening off is and you would like more on that um, topic, leave it in the comments down below. I would love to make a video about hardening plants off um, and it is really, really important. So um, make sure that you do your research and harden your pl plants off so that all your wonderful work that you put into these transplants don't go to waste when you go to plant them. So that is all that I have for you guys today. Those are the five mistakes that I want you guys to avoid whenever you are seed starting. So if you are going into your first year of seed starting, hopefully this helped you so that you can have um, a really good um, successful year of seed starting. And if you've been seed starting for a while and been making one of these mistakes, hopefully um, this will help you. Um, maybe you haven't had the best of seed starting luck and this can help you um, make some changes and have a great seed starting year. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!